It's summertime and everyone is heading to the beach. And there's a lot to see out there. <laughs> Come on guys, be honest. You fell for the clickbait. You saw those pretty girls and probably thought, what in the world is Jake Tolan up to now? <laughs> Well, I was in Florida in January and I went down to the Keys. Have a look at this cliff. The Keys, look how still this water is and I can see the bridge out there. Man. It was an exceptionally calm day. Look at the water. It just blew me away. We are by the seven mile bridge. And right now I am just inches from the water. My phone was touching the sand. And look, you can see across um, the water there. It's at least seven, eight miles. Just incredible. It just blew me away. It was so clear. However, when I drove back over the bridge, I could see boats appear behind the curvature. After returning to California from my vacation, I went to the beach to measure the elevation angle to the horizon accurately with my theodolite. On the way to Santa Barbara, I decided to stop by Summerland because there's a nice park there with a uh, nice ramp, as you can see here. Look at that. It gradually decreases. So I've taken measurements walking down this uh, path. I've taken measurements at five locations, which are at different um, elevations above the water and um, I got some interesting numbers. By using the measured elevation angle to the horizon I can then calculate the earth curvature. Now I'm showing an upward curving um, ray of uh, light there reaching us at the observation location on top of the hill there and so if we assume straight line propagation um, i can draw the geometry that's the dotted yellow line intersecting the blue curvature and we can do our calculation what do you think we're going to discover okay so this is site three we were at the top we were by the bench there and now we're by this garbage cans. My watch also yeah, has an altimeter on it, uh, but it wasn't that uh, accurate. It was set at about 900 feet and uh, close to the water it's off as you can see. It was overcast, but uh, that's what I wanted. Uh, the ocean surface was clearly visible. Here the theodolite uh, telescope is at about six feet off of the water and uh, this is what we observe look at that you can see the waves more clearly you can see they're starting to block that oil rig so let's look at the numbers so these are the results folks look at that very interesting graph but to be expected. So there's two zones, zone one and two. Now, when we're really high up, we measure a more constant radius uh, of curvature of about 4,290 for the last data point, almost 4,300. And then as we get to about 20 feet, it rapidly begins to transition and starts dropping almost linearly as you can see in zone one why does it do that as you probably suspect it is refraction that's doing it and this simple calculation illustrates the two zones 
as the propagation is almost parallel to the surface, um, the angle difference uh, takes off in zone 1, and when it's propagating at a steeper angle towards the surface, uh, we're in zone 2. In addition, closer to the water surface, the properties of the atmosphere are different. The vapor content is different than higher up. Let's have a look at this graphic. Now, the atmosphere changes properties gradually. Okay, and uh, there is a gradient, and it's also changing with altitude. All right, and there's different zones. So this ray diagram helps us uh, visualize what is happening. So down closer to the water, uh, the gradient is steeper and light starts bending rapidly. And then that uh, elevation angle is changing. So Snell's law tells us that now the bending is less because the incidence angle is a little steeper. Okay, so two things are happening. One, that angle is changing, and uh, refraction uh, is affecting the wavefront less. But also, now we're propagating to a higher altitude, and uh, the gradients are different. All right, so it's a complicated thing here. Two things are moving. Now, <clears throat> the dotted blue lines, those are tangents to the curve, and so we realize there is a problem here. How come close to the water we measure the steeper angle? So, you know, the steepest angle here is the red line because it propagates up. So how can we have a steeper angle down closer to the water? So this kind of gives us a clue that there's more going on here. We also need downward refraction. Is not simply upward refraction. Okay, so this makes more sense now. We got a zone, horizontal zone, where there's upward bending because the light is really close to the surface of the water and the gradients are different. Then it propagates a little bit higher and now it enters a zone where it starts to curve a little bit towards the uh, surface, downward bending. Okay, and then it propagates even higher and it sort of reaches a uh, linear, almost linear propagation zone. Okay, and now this model makes a little bit more sense. Look at the steepest blue dotted line. Okay, so yeah, that makes sense now. When we're closer to the water, we're seeing this uh, steeper angle. But then when we go higher up, the light has begun to kind of curve back down a little bit towards the ground. So, quite fascinating. But um, let's see what this means to the range of observation. So now, notice what's going on here. Because of this bending, look at the blue dotted line. We should have seen point A out there. But instead, we're seeing point B, which is much closer to us. The nature of light is a bit more complicated, and this graphic tries to illustrate that. According to the Huygens principle, each point along the wavefront is a new source of uh, wavelets. And so, what reaches our eyes is actually a superposition of multiple wavelets. It's the interference pattern that is generated. So it is affected by um, the properties of the air, not just along that center ray, but neighboring rays. And the width of that depends on the wavelength and other things, but it is a superposition. So things are a little bit more complicated. Now, regardless of what we imagine is happening to the light as it propagates, this is the result we've uh, measured. Now, it appears we're converging on a radius of curvature of about 4,300 miles.
we can be certain there is still refraction occurring at the higher um, altitudes, like site 1. Look at the uh, phi angle, that's in degrees. 0.126? Wow, that's a very small angle. So we're still experiencing refraction, folks. Um, yeah, you have to be looking at a much deeper angle. And uh, if we do that, if I were to go on top of the mountain and look down, then another phenomena starts taking over. Um, haze will um, limit my uh, visibility, and so the measured horizon will be um, deceiving. It will not be the actual horizon. And so I'll start measuring a steeper angle that does not correspond to straight line uh, propagation. And so the radius of the Earth that I'm calculating will appear to begin to go down. This was my first observation over water with the theodolite, and I did not know where the inflection point was going to be. Um, so now that I know it's around 15 to 30 feet, I will take more data points um, in that uh, zone so we get a better curve. Some people have been asking for this kind of measurement, so I decided to share these results with you since um, I'm going on my summer break and uh, probably won't be making any videos. But I'll be doing measurements throughout the summer and uh, hopefully the weather improves right now. Uh, it's kind of overcast and cloudy, but I'll do more measurements and I'll report back. I've assembled a few photos off the internet and uh, look at that. Lots of different phenomena that can be observed. We see what appears to be ships uh, disappearing behind the water. Okay, uh, curvature of the earth. Yeah, very interesting. We see a boat levitating. We see a uh, reflection of the boundary layer right above the water. Lots of interesting phenomena to study. But one thing is clear. Light has to be bending. And if light is bending, that has implications for what we observe and what we conclude, all right? Whenever we use electromagnetic waves to remotely sense our world, we're susceptible to, you know, bending in the atmosphere. So just drawing conclusions based on straight line propagation is erroneous. Now that I have a theodolite, I'll be making a lot of measurements of uh, ships over water. Also, if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. Uh, lots going on. I decided to make this video because um, a few of you have asked about measurements um, of the horizon over water. And um, I'll be gone for the summer, quite busy. And um, so I'll make another video later in the year with uh, some of my results. I want to do measurements in different atmospheric conditions. Soon I'll be attacking the globe with drones. Exciting times ahead. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful summer.